Hey you witches, how you doing today? Welcome or welcome back. My name is Taya and today I wanted to share with you my holiday haul. Um, basically December is a big month for me, um, especially when it comes to acquiring new witchy things because it is a month of gifting. And it's also a month of connecting with friends and family and different opportunities, which I'll explain here. Um, basically, my birthday is at the beginning of December. And then, of course, we have Christmas, which are two big gifting events. And I do make a point of putting together a wish list for people who, you know, for my mom, my sister, my husband... Um, etc. Right? People that want to buy me gifts and right, they want to make sure that they get me something that I'm going to enjoy. And my my tastes do tend to incline towards the esoteric a little bit. So I make a list because otherwise they just don't have a clue what to do. So um, I have, you know, two gifting events from December to share with you, as well as I took a trip to uh, Jasper, Alberta, which isn't far from here. And I got some uh, a couple of really excellent items at uh, an amazing store, which I'll share with you, um, that are for my witchcraft practice, as well as a foraging trip with a good friend of mine. And we went out to her property and did some foraging. And I found some really, really cool stuff. Or we found some really cool stuff. So let's get into it. I will share with you all of the different things that I've acquired over the month of December. Hey friends, sorry, just a little edit there. I had to go and look up some information. So we are gonna start with, um, I think we'll start with the books. I'm not gonna say like, oh, I got this for Christmas or I got this, da, da, da. like I'm just gonna go through all the things, all the things that we got. Um, so I'm gonna start with a couple of books. Now these aren't necessarily witchy, these two books. Um, but they kind of can be. They kind of have like an esoteric, a little bit of a spiritual, a little bit of a, it's about the origins of civilization. I am an anthropologist. That's what I studied at school was anthropology. And so this kind of stuff really hits home for me. And some of you might not be on board with it and that's okay. Um, it's kind of a little bit controversial. It is a couple of books by Graham Hancock. So Graham Hancock is actually the gentleman who put together the show Ancient Apocalypse on Netflix, which was trending uh, in the top 10 there over December and or late November, early December. And I watched Ancient Apocalypse. And what it does is it basically posits that there was an earlier civilization of humans on Earth prior to about 12,500 years ago, who were sort of wiped out, but before they were, they left, they sort of sent out messengers to the hunter-gatherer populations at the time um, to teach them um, masonry, um, to teach them about agriculture, uh, etc. And it's really interesting. And in the course of the Ancient Apocalypse series, he does actually interview some archaeologists and anthropologists, uh, a couple of whom I'm actually very familiar with, and I know their work, and I'm just like, oh, that's really interesting that they're on board with this. So anyways, if you want to get the whole deal, check out Ancient Apocalypse on Netflix. Netflix, cool show, but they're kind of based on accumulation of previous work of Graham Hancock. He is a, um, he's a journalist who basically does journalistic research into the sort of origins of human of humans and he looks at sort of like the mythologies and how there's these common mythologies that go across all of these different civilizations throughout the world from north and south america from you know europe from um the asias from even like down in new zealand australia and right there's these common themes that run through like the great flood um there are you know, common architectural, uh, all of a sudden cropping up, common architectural methods, architectural buildings that were so advanced for the hunter-gatherer populations at the time, right? How did they come up with this? So anyways, it's fascinating stuff. I could go on. But his books are um, Magician of the Gods, I believe was the first one, 
they're not really necessarily a, a sequels, but they're kind of both on the same topic. So the first one is Magicians of the Gods. Or is it the second one? That might be the second one. <laughs> and Fingerprints of the Gods. Um, the Evidence of Earth's Lost Civilization. Um, it's fascinating stuff. So I haven't read the books yet, but I mean, the let's just say the show hooked me and I was like, I need to know more. So these two books... Um, are kind of the start. So a lot of my witchcraft practice has to do with, right? Where do we come from? Where do we go? Um, so this definitely spoke to me. Anyways, um, the next book I want to share with you is I got a couple, well, it's a two books, but I got um, a couple of almost like coffee table books. Uh, the first one is called Magic and Witchcraft, an Illustrated History by Ruth Clydesdale. It's a lovely book. Again, it's like a coffee table book. Um, it's like beautiful, full color illustrations, and it goes through all sorts of interesting things about the, the, the sort of the history of magic and witchcraft. So chapter one is charms, curses, and witches in the ancient world. Uh, chapter two, from Anglo-Saxon elves to magical sacrifices. Chapter three, glamorous witches and hungry women. Chapter four, the witch on trial. Chapter five, Old Magic, New Worlds. Chapter six, The Magician in His Circle. And chapter seven, The Once and Future Witch. Witch, The Once and Future Witch. So we got this one here, Magic and Witchcraft, an Illustrated History by Ruth Clydesdale. And the other book I received is A History of Magic, Witchcraft, and the Occult. This is a DK book. I love this book with this like kind of coppery shine on the front. Um, and again, it has, it's a, just, it's, it's again, it's a compilation. Um, I can't go through all the chapters because they're, they tend to be short and there's a lot of them, but it goes ancient roots, prehistory to 400 CE, curse or cure, 400 to 1500, scholars and sabbats, 1500 to 1700, those are the years, secrecy and ceremony from 1700 to 1900, and modern magic, 1900 and onwards. So um, I've, I've gone through a little bit of this book. It's got some great information, beautiful images. And again, it's a bit of a coffee table book, but I was pretty pumped to receive that. These two together make a really nice little set. So yeah, that was kind of exciting. I also received um, some tarot and oracle decks. So the first one I want to share is it's really niche. Uh, it's called Grunge Tarot. If you know me, I was like a grunge girl back in the 90s. So Grunge Tarot, edited by Francesca Mat Mattioni, illustrations by Andrea Moresco. And uh, if you want to see a walkthrough of this deck, let me know below. I'd love to do it. But you can see on the cover, it's like, you know, the grunge dude in his like shorts and layered t-shirt with like smashing his guitar. Kind of fun. Uh, the next decks, the, it's, a, it's a tarot deck and an oracle deck that kind of go together. They are by Claire Goodchild. And it is the Antique Anatomy Tarot and the Memento Mori Lenormand and Oracle deck. Uh, yeah, I am so excited to have these. I wanted them for the longest time, again, because I studied anthropology. Um, I was actually a physical anthropologist, so... I studied human remains in archaeological context, which means human bones. And these are both decks are very much based. Uh, they've got lots of anatomy, a lot of uh, typically bones in them uh, mixed with greenery. You can kind of see on the cover of this one here, uh, the, the aesthetic. So I'm really excited to kind of get into these two. Um, they're, they're a bit more popular. They've been around. If you want to see a walkthrough, let me know below. I can certainly do it. And uh, yeah, those, that's kind of, that's kind of it for the decks that I got. I always like to put a few on my list because you just never know when somebody's like, oh, that's good, right? It's a good price point. It's about 30 some bucks for a deck <laughs> and you can usually get them at some local shop. So that's kind of fun. And then the last few things I wanted to share with you, well, quite a few things, um, are more things that I picked up throughout the course of the month. Um, this one is actually, well, this was a gift. It's the Micro Fleur Microwave Flower Press. I'm really excited about this. I will just take it out of the case so you can see. 
It's got a couple of pads in here. They're in plastic, right? They take them out of the plastic, but there's like a liner sheet, two felt pads, and then they clip in between these big kind of plastic plates. And you put your dried flowers in them and you kind of zap them in the microwave and I mean it's like 20-30 seconds typically and they're they're done so I, I press my flowers in the microwave right now by putting you know say the flower between two sheets of um words are escaping me two sheets of paper what is that paper called paper towel Guys, this is how my brain works. I literally forget the word paper towel. So I press it between two pieces of paper towel and then I put a plastic plate on the bottom and a plastic plate on top to put a little bit of weight to press it and then I put it in the microwave. So this is the official flower press for the microwave. So I'm really excited um, because it presses flowers like in seconds. You don't have to like press them in a book and wait days to weeks for things to press. So that is the Microfleur Microwave Flower Press, which I will use a ton in my witchy practice, let me tell you. Now, earlier in the month, I went to uh, Jasper on a trip with my husband for my birthday. We met up with a bunch of friends in Jasper. We had a great time. And while we were there, we went to a store called Our Native Land. Um, and what they do is they showcase indigenous arts practitioners, they're, you know, they sell their artwork, they sell their, their goods. Um, and oh, it is an amazing, amazing store. There's like, I mean, there's handmade moccasins, beaded jewelry. There's so much, there's pottery, there's like painted artwork, there's leather work, um, like any sort of craft that's kind of vaguely indigenous uh, they have there and pr predominantly made by indigenous practitioners. And I picked up a couple of things there. So the first one I'm just gonna show you guys really quick is a couple of arrows, which you may have seen in my video about arrows, my favorite, one of my favorite tool ones. So I got these two arrows. Uh, and again, if you wanna know how to use them, I'll link the arrow video in the, in the description down below. But a couple of indigenous handmade arrows. Um, yeah, and they have like flint tips on them and these absolutely gorgeous feather flight feathers on them yeah and it's all done up with like I'm assuming that's like sinew yeah they're beautiful I'm, I'm absolutely excited about them and at that store I also got I haven't shared this yet is this beautiful little I believe it's rabbit it's so soft so that's why I think it might be rabbit um it doesn't say it didn't say what type of animal it was but I bought this beautiful little pelt I mean guys it was like 15 bucks so it's all, it's not really finished on the back. It's just raw, this beautiful pelt. And I'm going to use it for my own casting, right? When you throw out your, your staves, I thought this would be perfect to lay down like horizontally and toss the, the, ohm, the ohm sticks onto it. So um, I've I had been wanting something and I was like 15 bucks. You kind of can't go wrong. Um, so that, those were a couple of really exciting things I got for my practice. And I also did a lovely walk with my friend Erica on her property. She lives rural here in Alberta. And we went and we, oh guys, we like, we huffed it. We were, we were wandering around through snowdrifts up to our knees. It was an absolutely amazing afternoon or morning, I guess. It was kind of a morning. And we got, we found a few things. I bless her heart. She's like, you can have it. We found, knocked out of a tree. So it wasn't in the tree, it was on the ground. This little tiny hummingbird nest. How cute is that? So I'm gonna put that in a little jar. But a hummingbird nest. Hey, it's kind of hard to see, but these are like little feathers along here. These are all little feathers lining the, fe lining the nest. And she was very excited to show me this wonderful old tree on her property that she likes to work with. And it had recently become inhabited by honeybees. They, they keep bees. And I think one of their bee populations had sort of swarmed off, hived off and had taken up residence in this beautiful old tree. Well, when we got there, the tree was actually, um, a huge branch had broken off in the weight of the snow, I believe. And it had torn open part of the trunk and the bees are nesting inside the trunk of the tree. And it had exposed part of like the honey, you could see the honeycomb. And so I think because of this damage, the bees... The honeybees had, in the middle of winter here, in the deeps of winter, had tried to fly out and find somewhere new. 
Um, and so there was, unfortunately, deceased honeybees all around. So um, in an act of good faith, I suppose, I collected some. I have them here. Just all these little honeybees. I don't know if it's going to focus. Um, so we collected up some honeybees. And this is just a tiny little bit of bark that I found from the tree. It's a very special tree in her practice. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to glue this little bit of bark to the top of this vial of little honeybees. And I'll hold on to those as sort of a, an honoring or a remembrance of her tree. I don't want to name it. There's a name for her tree. I don't want to name it. That's her private business. But, um, right, an honoring of that very special tree. So that is kind of all of the things that I sort of accumulated and collected up over the month of December in sort of my holiday haul. Um, I hope you guys all had a great um, holiday season as well. Um, yeah, what did you guys get that was sort of special to your witchcraft practice? What did you get that you're going to be incorporating and working with? Um, I'd love to know. Share us in the comments below. And otherwise, yeah, that's our video for today. And we'll uh, catch you in the next one.